Lynette, you're a homeless veteran living in your car. Yes, sir. Oh my gosh, tell me about it. Well, it started um, July of last year. Um, I was in Compton. Um, that's my home of record, where both my, my parents grew up and my grandparents are from. Um, my grandfather is Maxie Filer, and Blundell Filer is my grandmother. And I get a lot of my um, background, a lot of my upbringing from my grandparents. Some people say I'm like an old soul. And so they passed away. Um, my grandmother passed away last year in February, and my grandfather in 2011. And after they passed away, I, I wanted to come back to Compton just to kind of get more of my roots after getting out of the military. Well, I found that some of my beliefs and my understandings um, clashed with Compton and my family. Um, I have PTSD from going to war twice. And the core of me likes structure. It likes discipline. It likes to have evidence. It likes to have understanding about things. And I realize not everybody thinks that way. So when I moved back home with my family in Compton, we got into fights and disagreements about some of my beliefs. One belief of mine is that the household should be clean. There should not be filth. Everything has a place. Um, you can make a mess, but you have to clean up that mess. Um, another belief is that you can control the environment. You can control the energy. Um, the gang activity that was happening at my grandparents' house disturbed me. My grandparents' house was never tagged with, with graffiti or anything like that. And when I came back to Compton last year, I saw that. So one of the disputes between me and my family was about me painting my grandparents' wall white. I have a judge, um, my uncle that's a judge, and he owned the house at the time, and he said, well, why did you paint the wall white? And I said, why not? Isn't it beautiful? Isn't it clean? I said, it had graffiti on there. He said, well, you don't understand because you've been away from Compton. That now will attract the gang members to come tag the house again. And I just didn't understand that. And we couldn't see eye to eye about that. So I basically kept painting the wall white till they stopped tagging it. That was a, a problem between me and my family. They felt I was attracting gang energy. I felt I was blocking gang yeah, energy yeah. and supporting my grandparents in a way of, you know, the old fashioned, this is your property. No one comes on your property and just yeah. degrades it. So that was one disagreement with me and my family when I was living there. The other was, my brain went dark after seeing young people die. Um, I really truly believed that Marines couldn't die. From the training that I was with as a hospital corpsman, we train with Marines and if we pass their training, we walk, talk, eat, live Marine Corps. When you do that, you believe in everything they teach you and everything you train with. And you don't believe that Marines can die. You think it's impossible. So when you go to war and you see that happen, it does something to your soul. It does something to your soul. It's not like I hadn't seen death. I had seen death in older generations, people getting sick and passing away. Um, working in the hospital, I saw death. But when I saw Marines die, it did something dark to my brain, something bad to my soul. So, so how long have you been living in your car? So when I told my family about smoking, that helped with my PTSD, um, Spice, they decided that was not something they would tolerate or accept living at the household. So we agreed that I was gonna use my time to find a house, find an apartment with my um, disability and move out of the household because I, I had already gone to treatment and I had decided that this was something that was gonna be helpful okay. with me. So you were smoking spice and that's how you ended up homeless. That's how it happened. My, oh my family, gosh. I went to the hospital one night I had gastritis because I was internalizing a lot of my stress. Right. I was seeing a psychologist. Psychologist said, hey, you need a better environment. Right. Said, it's your environment. Yeah. Said, look, the spice is not good. He said, but the fact of you balancing your priorities and having structure and you're coming and you're talking to me about your stressors, that's what's helping you, you know, go forward. He said, get out of that household. That household is yeah. it's just not good. And your only option was the car? Only option was a car after that. So what I did was I said, well, I have my disability. I was happy. I have my disability. I can go. I can look for apartments. I can try to find some type of temporary program. I applied for U.S. Vets. Um, they said I wasn't eligible for the care that they could 
the services that they offered. I wasn't eligible. I, I made too much money with my disability. So I said, okay, um, let's try apartments. So I searched for some apartments because mind you, I have two kids. And it was summertime when they had gotten through the last year of Compton and it was summertime. And um, I'm using my disability, my social security, and I'm, I'm given all the documents that you need to get, you know, uh, apartment. I'm waiting on the phone call, that takes time. Yeah. I get the phone call back. Uh, we didn't approve you for the apartment. Sorry, you'll get something in the mail. Well, how will I get something in the mail if I'm homeless? So it was like, okay, discouraging because first off, that's not my norm. I'm not used to looking for housing. For 14 years, Navy, Marine Corps always supplied housing. So this is a new process to me, but I understand my, my, my psychologist told me, apply again. It just takes a long time, takes a long time. Well, in the meantime, I'm in Compton staying in the parks. I got shot up in my car. If I take you to the That's back of my car. That's why you have the... That's the Spider-Man. I had to be creative and cover my car. Now, let me tell you what because happened. Because you got shot out? I was in Long Beach. Oh I was trying God. to find apartments and learn Long Beach a little better because that's where I'm from. That's where right. I was born. Now, my parents were raised in Compton, but I was born Long Beach Naval Base. Right. I stayed in a park and the police said, it's too late. You got to go. Right. You can't stay. I said, oh, man. Well, Compton has a park that I can go to and I can stay. Gonzalez Park. Fire, uh, fireman house right there. And then it's a big old park. I'm headed down Compton Boulevard, going to the park. When I get to Aran Aranby, I believe, is the yeah. street, um, there's a car wash to the right and there's a stoplight. Well, I see a vehicle going this way and traffic's supposed to be going this way. Yeah. So I said, oh, it's like 11 o'clock at night. I yeah. said, oh, this guy must be a drunk driver or something. I pull out of the way. I don't want him to come my way. Right, right. I pull over to the car wash. The individual pulled all the way around. I thought he was leaving. He pulled up right behind me, jumped out of the car, point blank started shooting at my car. Oh my gosh. I drove just like I was in Iraq. Went right back oh to my, my training. Wow. Now, I can show you, I had... No, I was wondering why that was like that and that makes sense. So what's it like living in your car and what's gonna, what's your future like? Well, this is the point where I've been out for, let's see, it was 2011. I've been out for six years now. I have been back and forth with apartments, out of apartments, staying with family, out of apartments again, trying to find my own place. I'm to the point now where I really would like to use my VA loan. That's my, my bigger plan. I've kind of right. given up on the other stuff because it's kind of, the system's kind of beat me. Yeah. I, I can't seem to, to win with those. So my biggest hope, I've talked with the police officers down here. I've tried to network a little bit to see real estate, um, realtors, people that know about the, you know, the houses. I understand you have to have your ducks in a row when you use the VA loan. So that's my hope. Um, my dream is I would love to win the lottery. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just going to ask that's you. That's my dream. Yeah. I have dreams yeah. still. Well, I still have dreams. Well, if you had three wishes, what would they be? First, get my children back. I miss my children. Yeah. The way they were taken, it was terrible. Um, and they weren't taken by any authority. They were taken by family. So that's what hurts the most. It's like, who gave you the right? So my first wish would be to have my children back. If I could have them back, my heart would feel like it's back, you know, like it's normal. Um, of course, to have them, I have to have somewhere to be. I have to have shelter. So any human being <laughs> needs shelter. So my children, shelter, and then I would love to win the lottery. And the reason why I would love to win the lottery, my, my, my um, understanding about healing and people is that you need shelter, you need love, you need um, a little bit of laughter, a little bit of learning, a combination of all of that. And what I would do with that money is I would build a hotel and I would have where you could come in, you could get massage, uh, aromatherapy, food, a meal and a place to stay. With that money, you could afford to do that. That's what I would love. That would be my dream, my business. And I understand you have to have a lot of money to do that. But that's what I would do with that money. And I would also lend, like the Bible says, lend. You saw my Bible. Yeah, yeah, you got your Bible. I read, let me tell you, I well, read Psalms and Proverbs a lot. So good. one thing that's helped me from being in my car and being homeless is I've gotten back to reading. I literally, I read in the Navy, but it was to memorize and apply. Okay, because that's how they teach you. But getting out, I'm learning to now understand and read, read and understand, read and understand. So that's the difference. And that's one thing I was trying to tell my family about the spice. Yeah. 
I didn't really trigger that until I started smoking that. And I'm like, whoa, that was deep, you know? And I don't know how people take it, but for me... Well, that spice is bad stuff. It, it's, it's horrible. Once I found out what it was yeah. and all the reactions it could cause, it's yeah. horrible. But the problem was the evidence it, it created for me was good. So it was like trying to balance that. You know what I'm saying? Trying to take... It's good for a little bit, but then it gets, you know... But it can get you into trouble. Well, thank you very much for talking to me. You're welcome. Um, thank you for coming by and asking. And I mean, here's my Navy sweatshirt. Yeah. This bad boy has been with me for a long time. You know it's your favorite when the pockets are torn and things are tore up and you still hold on to it. Yeah.